let's see the presentation about the libraries for selective tutorial jot that are in Open Wallet Foundation. It's being presented by Daniel Fett. Hello and welcome to my talk about SDJOT. I'm going to talk about SDJOT and True Labs projects in the Open Wallet Foundation. My name is Daniel Fett and I'm here today for AuthEat. So in this talk, I would like to talk about SDJOT itself. I'll give you a brief introduction if you're not familiar with SDJOT. And then I'm going to talk about the reference implementation that we as the specification authors and editors created for the SDJOT specification, as well as a Kotlin implementation that was created independently. So let's start. What is SDJOT? Well, the SD stands for Selective Disclosure. So SDJOT enables selective disclosure for JWTs um, and is based on a very simple approach. Um, in fact, we say simple is a feature uh, for SDJOT. Um, and this approach is based on a concept called salted hashes. I'll get to that in a moment. SDJOT enables JOTs for the use as verifiable credentials, a term that I hope you're familiar with. Um, but SDJOT is, is a universal specification, so it does not define a, a format for verifiable credentials, um, but it can be really used with many use cases. Okay, so quick primer on the ideas behind this. When we're talking about credentials, as in identity credentials, there's a traditional model that you will find, for example, in OpenID Connect. And in this traditional model, um, on the left side here, an identity provider, um, when asked for the credentials or the claims about a user, will create a signed document, signed by the identity provider, and will forward this document to a relying party. For example, in uh, OpenID Connect, this is the ID token. And the ID token contains exactly those claims about a user that a relying party needs to know in this particular use case. But that also means that the identity provider will always be in the loop and will always know uh, what exactly the data is that a relying party wants to have and always know the identity of the relying party. Um, so this has various uh, drawbacks, um, although it has been quite successful, this model. Um, there's now, uh, when we're talking about things like decentralized identity or SSI or whatever you want to call it, there's the decoupled model, usually. Um, so there the idea is that an issuer creates a credential, so signed document, that contains all the claims about the user it knows. And then the end user can decide for each time it wants to use the credential, it can decide um, which claims to release to a certain verifier, as the relying party is then called. So we need a mechanism that allows for a signed credential signed by the issuer with the option of reducing the set of claims that can be released or that is released to a, a verifier. And that is exactly the purpose of SDJOT. It enables the selective disclosure feature for JOTs. So, um, for example, if you have a signed document with the user claims you see on the left side here, selective disclosure allows um, the holder or wallet or end user to um, to essentially delete stuff from this credential um, and then release only the subset to a verifier. So how does this work in SDJOT? So just as JOTs, um, SDJOT operates with signed documents that contain JSON. So here on the left is the user data that we're talking about here. And um, now the issuer has to prepare this document for selective disclosure. And to do this, the issuer has to make decisions. Um, in particular, the issuer has to decide which of these claims will be selectively disclosable. And for those claims that, that it thinks should be selectively disclosable, the issuer creates so-called disclosures. 
Disclosures are very simple JSON objects, um, just consisting of an array of three elements. Um, the three elements are a sort value that is unique for each claim, the claim name, and the claim value. In this example, we only show strings, but the claim value can really be anything. So it can be an object, can be a number, whatever. Then um, the issuer removes the claims from the original document and replaces them by the hashes. So instead of the hashes, um, there's now a new element called underscore sd. Um, sorry, instead of the claims, there's now this new element called underscore sd that contains just the hashes of the disclosures. And obviously, you, when you just see the hashes, you cannot, uh, cannot guess what the disclosure would be because there's this unique salt uh, included in the disclosure. And that means, uh, or that exactly is the salted hash approach. So the document that is now signed by the issuer is the one on the left, which doesn't contain the claim plain text values. So this is just turned into a job, just standard job, so just a signed document um, with the JSON that we saw before. And then there are the disclosures, and those need to be encoded for transport as well. So those are base64 URL encoded. So this is essentially plain text, just uh, encoded differently. And there's this tilde uh, character as a separator. This whole thing that you see on the screen here is sent then from the issuer to the end user's wallet, or to the holder, as it's been called. And the holder can then um, decide which parts of this it wants to send to a particular verifier. So of course it has to send the issuer assigned part on the left, but for the disclosures it can just remove any disclosures it doesn't want to release um, to the verifier. And by that of course deciding which plain text claims to release to the verifier. That's the basic idea behind SD drawn. There are more details. Um, for example, uh, we have a mechanism called key binding where um, the, the holder can also prove possession of a certain private key um, to ensure that this, um, there's some freshness in the transaction. Um, and other things, we have other encodings and so on. Um, if you're interested in that, I suggest to look at the IETF specification for SD short. Because now I want to talk about the reference implementation that we have. Um, our reference implementation for SDJort is written in Python and is an Open Wallet Foundation Labs project. So what does reference implementation mean? When we developed the specification for SDJort, we decided that it is probably a good idea to both write the specification and a reference implementation at the same time. So those were developed together to ensure that at every step that we make with the specification, we know that it's implementable and that it's easy to implement and that it makes sense also for implementers. So the, the reference implementation that we have always follows the latest developments of the specification. So it's always up to date. And there are many uh, advantages to this approach. For example, we do have, of course, some examples in the uh, specification, and we generate those examples from our reference implementation. So they are not hard-coded in the specification, but they are from actual running code. That's extremely useful. So if you want to change something, say, in the format, we can just say, change the implementation, regenerate all the examples, and we're done. Very useful. And we know that there are no mistakes, like typos or something in the examples. We also, as I already mentioned, use this for test driving. Um, so if we have any new features or if we want to modify the syntax or anything like that, we can just do that in our reference implementation and see uh, whether it works, whether it makes sense, get a feeling for um, the, the effort needed by implementers. Very useful. We also produce test cases. So we have some test cases defined in the reference implementation uh, repository right now. Um, we want to make those usable across projects so that everybody can test on the same 
um, list of test cases. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. And also, of course, with this implementation, we wanted to demonstrate what a production-ready library interface could look like, um, how we think an SDJOT library should work, so on, on what level it's operating and so on, what the input and output data is and so on. Um, just a word on the examples that we produce for the specification. Um, what we did is we defined a very simple format. It's a YAML-based format. You can see an example here on the left that is used to, um, to define um, essentially what a credential should contain and which of the claims in the credential should be selectively disclosable. So here in the example on the left, you can see that most of the claims are marked with an exclamation mark SD, which, um, you know, YAML is a YAML uh, type. So by this YAML type, we declare that a certain claim uh, should be selectively disclosable and our library consumes that. Um, we use that, as I said, to, um, to feed that into our library. Our library will then produce the SDJOT itself. It will produce the format that is used for the issuance, uh, the format for the presentation, and so on. Of course, we can then pull those um, artifacts in as examples in the spec. Um, but we also produce something that we would not normally see in a, a library. Um, it, produces some, some markdown that explains some of the artifacts um, in detail. For example, the disclosures um, are, of course, not normally contained in plain text. Um, so our library produces markdown to, um, that we can include in the spec to explain what is contained in the disclosures um, just for people reading the spec to get a feeling of that. So that is extremely useful. And when we're thinking about um, deploying SDJOT, of course, you need interoperability. Um, we already have something like seven independent libraries, um, seven independent implementations of SDJOT. We think that one next step could be to do interop testing between all those libraries, um, as it has been used quite successfully for other projects like the Quick project. Um, we imagine that, for example, this could be hosted at the OWF. Um, that libraries um, could be cross uh, could be tested cross implementation. So one library produces an artifact, the other one consumes it, and then we see whether everything works. Um, so that could be one of the next steps. And if you have any ideas in that direction, if you have experience with that, your input would be very welcome. So what's the status of our reference implementation? Uh, it's called SDJOT Python in the OWF currently has a lab status, but from our side, it's essentially feature complete. As I said, it's, it implements all the stuff in the spec. Um, it's tested. We have well, both the automated tests and people using this, and it's essentially production ready. For now, um, it was developed and maintained by, the, um, by us, the ITF draft editors, but also some external contributors. Um, but if you're interested in using this, we would also welcome new contributors to this. There's uh, some work to do. For example, um, the library's internal API, the documentation could be improved on that. Um, it's quite simple, but still it needs to be documented. Um, we um, have those test cases that we want to externalize at some point. I already talked about that. And of course, there are also overlaps with other projects, for example, the Identity Python project, and we imagine that the uh, cooperation there could be improved as well. This was the SDJOT reference implementation, but I'd also like to talk about another implementation, which is actually the first project that was in the Open Wallet Foundation, um, and that is the SDJOT Kotlin library that was developed and maintained by Fabian Haupt. Just very briefly, the um, SDJOT Kotlin library uh, also has the lab status in the Open Wallet Foundation. It is based on connect to ids Nimbus library. And here, credentials are represented as type-safe data classes, obviously something you don't have in Python. <laughs> um, this library is up to date with the draft version 04 
of the SD drop spec, the current version is 0.5, so there's a small delta between those two, um, but nothing too bad if you're interested to bring that up to date. Feel free, otherwise uh, I think Fabian will uh, probably also do that soon. You can already use this library in your project uh, via Maven or Gradle. There are snapshots available um, at the URL here on the slides. And just as the Python implementation, this project is open for new contributors. There are already some external pull requests by um, people wanting to use this library. Um, I'm pretty sure this will be more even in future. So if you're interested in that, please ask Fabian or uh, send a pull request to the Open Wallet Foundation about this. That's all I have for you today. Um, Thank you very much for listening today and uh, thank you for having me here at the Open Source Summit. Um, if you have any questions, if you uh, want to talk about a cooperation, please reach out to me. Uh, here's my email address, my Twitter, my LinkedIn. Um, I would be very happy to see even more implementations of SDJOT. Uh, I think that's a good sign also for the spec. And again, if you have anything you want to talk about, please reach out and thank you for listening. Thank you. As Daniel is in the YouTube stream, I think. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And if there are any questions, um, please comment on the YouTube uh, uh, stream. Do we have any questions in the room to Daniel? Okay. So thank you. Um,